Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week, we're going to take a look at some of the update services that are built into OS X Server. And this week, we're going to take a look at the software update. Now, software update is Apple's way of updating software. Uh, it's been built into the Mac uh, and on all their different versions. And it's a way that uh, Apple has used to push updates uh, to their machines. Now, lately with the Mac App Store, Apple has changed that uh, slightly where most of those updates go through the Mac App Store. Uh, but software update is, uh, is an option for being able to download and install all of Apple's updates from their servers. Now, the software update service that's built into OS X Server gives you the ability to uh, use the software update service in one place. So what it does is allows you to download these updates to your server and then have all of your client machines on your network pull those updates from your server instead of hitting Apple servers and waiting for the update to take place. Now the advantage of this is that uh, first off it saves bandwidth, uh, especially if you've got a lot of computers on your network. If they're all individually downloading the same updates, they're taking up bandwidth. Uh, but secondly, it also speeds up the process because a lot of times downloading updates from so uh, Apple servers takes a long time. So if you've got them downloaded in one place, it will speed up the delivery of those updates and your machines will be updated a lot quicker. So the server gives you the ability to kind of decide how you want to do that and how you want to set that up. Uh, we're going to talk in a, another screencast, uh, another option, and that's Apple's caching service. Um, but let's to this week, we're just going to do software update. So this is the service here uh, on the screen. You can see we've got uh, just two tabs. We've got settings and updates. Uh, I'll show you what updates looks like in a minute, but this is where all your updates will be listed. And over here are our basic settings. Uh, like every one of our services, we've got the status here, which obviously is offline because the service is off. And then I've got two modes. I've got an automatic mode and a manual mode. Now, the automatic mode um, takes all of the updates and they download them from Apple and immediately enable them for all your clients to install. Uh, so updates no longer supported by Apple are removed, but it will automatically download all these different updates. Now, what that'll do is that'll take up bandwidth uh, because they'll all be sitting on your server, take up a lot of, uh, of space as well on your machine. And so uh, this is probably not the uh, most optimal option. Uh, also, it also automatically enables them for all of your clients, and you may want to be more selective on what you allow clients to use or not. Uh, there's also a manual uh, version here where you choose the updates to download and enable, and uh, they'll be saved until they're explicitly deleted. So in other words, you download them, you control the ones you download, and you control when you delete them, and you control whether they're available or not to your client machines. Uh, this is the one that I would probably recommend because it does give you more control over what's going on and just kind of allows you to monitor your bandwidth and, uh, um, and your space, mainly your space, uh, more easily on your server. So that's the one that I would check. All right, now that I've got that, again, very simple settings. I just go ahead and throw the switch. Immediately now, all those updates are available. All right, my uh, server name right here. And so now we're all set and ready to go. Got the green light here, got the green light down here. So now let's go over to the Updates tab and let's take a look at what we've got. And so you can see here it says no updates right now because I don't have any updates sitting here. If I just come down to the gear here, however, I just uh, click on this check for updates. And now I have to wait a little while because uh, it'll take a little bit of time for those updates to take because uh, it's going to go to Apple's server and have to pull down the catalog. So I'm going to let it do that, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like once those updates have been downloaded. Okay, here we are back on the updates page, and as you can see, it's downloaded all of these updates for me here. And you can see that I've got uh, a whole list of things here uh, with different updates. Uh, voices, uh, you can see with uh, printers. Uh, you can see there's about 855 updates that are available. Now, I can sort these however I'd like. I can sort them by name, so I can kind of do them alphabetically by name one way or the other. I could do them by version if I wanted to have all the versions uh, sorted that way. Uh, I could do it by date, which is probably one of the better ways to do it. You can see I can go for most current, and you can see the most current update was a Chinese word list update. Uh, but you can see all the different things here, photo content stuff, uh, printers, uh, there's uh, an El Capitan update right there. And you can see over here, it gives you all the different sizes of these updates. And so you can see, you know, if I even sorted by size, uh, some of these updates can be quite big, uh, quite large uh, in there. So you probably don't want to download all of them, and that's why you can selectively choose the ones that you want to download. 
Uh, so for instance, I could come over here to this little line here where it says available and you can see I can download it or I can download and enable. So downloading it means I'm just downloading the update to my server. Download and enable means that I'm going to download the update and enable it to make it available to my users on my network and that's how that works. Uh, I could also check this automatically download new updates uh, button here and so any new update that comes in after today's date will just automatically be downloaded and I wouldn't have to wait to do that it would just do it on its own. So it's up to you if you want to set that. Uh, again if I come down here to the gear icon let me just select one of these for instance you can see I can download and enable down here or I can actually view the update and let me just click on that for a minute because what it does is gives me more information about the particular update whether it's available or not and then over here I can download and enable right from the screen but it just gives me a little bit more information on that particular update I'm just gonna cancel here uh, so that gives you a good kind of walkthrough of this screen uh, if you want to get an idea for where these are stored uh, let me just pull up uh, finder here so I can show you and you can see right here uh, it gives you an idea of where these are stored it's on my server, server hard drive, library, server, and then software update here, and then in the data file, and you can see it's stored right in here. And so that's where all my different updates will be stored, just in case you wanted to know where they were at on your server. Uh, let me just uh, pop that down. Okay, now that we've uh, understood the uh, software update service, there's a couple of things that you need to do. Uh, you'll notice even as we've been sitting here, the updates have grown. You see 995 because it's still doing some downloading of some of those updates as well. And it might take a little bit of time to get the catalog. Uh, but let me just show you a couple of other things that you need to do. Okay, now that we've got everything set up, one of the first things we need to do is to make sure that our client machines are going to our server instead of going to... Apple servers to get their updates and so in order to do that you need to go to your different client machines pull up a terminal a window and you want to type uh, this in you want to type in the sudo defaults right with the pathway to software update here right library preferences com.apple.software update and then you're going to type this in catalog URL with this URL with uh, port 8088 uh, which is what it uses for software update and then index.su catalog and right in here is where you would put your server's host name and you can see my host name is right in there right now and you would run that command and then that would set up that particular machine to look to the server for its updates instead of looking to Apple now if for some reason uh, you don't want to use that port just wanted to show you one more thing here uh, quickly as well you can also set this up with profile manager and I'm going to talk about profile manager later but there is a way to set that up to have your machines automatically set to look for the server uh, for their software updates so just wanted to let you know that was coming but if you wanted to change the port I thought I'd show you that as well let me just pop this down uh, if you wanted to change the port you'd come in and type this in sudo with the uh, string here that takes you into the server admin um, portion of the server app and then you would type in settings software update port to use and then put whatever port you wanted to use there I just put 80 there for my purposes but you could change the port if you wanted to do that uh, as well and that's how you'd make that work so that gives you an idea of how uh, software update works uh, like I said it's uh, one of the services that Apple has available I am going to show you the caching service as well and then you can decide which is better but hopefully that helps you get started with this this service. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.